Hello and a very warm welcome to today's Immuno-Oncology Insights webinar titled Same Section Spatial Multiomics, a platform for detailed analysis of the solid TME. I'm Lauren Coyle, an editor at BioInsights, and joining me today are Ariadne Pascal and Emily Neal, who will present the same section spatial multiomics capabilities of the MAC SEMA platform, which allows for the detection of hundreds of proteins and dozens of RNAs in an easy and automated manner. After the presentation, we'll have a live Q&A session. We invite our audience to pose their questions to our speaker using the Ask a Question box at the bottom of your screen, and we'll try to get to it during the session. I'd also like to draw your attention to the resources tab on the right, where you can find more information on the topics covered today. Now, I'd like to introduce our presenters. Ariadne joined Multengi Biotech in 2020 as Global Product Manager for Molecular Analysis. She has a PhD in Molecular Genetics from the University of Köln in Germany. Emily began working in spatial biology as a senior scientist at ReedCore. She joined Multengi Biotech in 2020 as the manager of the molecular team in Waltham ME. She has a PhD in biology from the Tufts University, USA. So without further ado, I'll hand over to Ariadne to kick us off with the first presentation. Hello everyone and welcome to our webinar on same section spatial multiomics. We are thrilled to have you join us today and as we explore the potential of this powerful technology in advancing cancer research. My name is Ariana Pascual and I am a global product manager at Miltony Biotech. Today I will tell you a bit about our mission at Miltony in the field of immune oncology and introduce you to our spatial biology portfolio. After my short introduction, my colleague Emily Neal, manager of the Molecular Technologies team, will introduce you to our special biology platform, the Maxima, and will demonstrate how specially resolved multiomics data can be used to characterize the heterogeneity of the tumor microenvironment. To start with who we are, in Multini, we specialize in developing and offering integrated workflows for biomedical research and clinical applications. We have more than 30 years of experience and one mission, make cancer history. This means providing end-to-end -end workflows and solutions to our customers, including our special biology solutions where we'll be focusing today. We have a global network of scientific and service support. We are present in 73 countries and have 23 subsidiaries worldwide. So we can provide our product, services, and support to our customers in all these regions. Something that makes us very special is that Miltony has over a thousand employees working in the R&D organization, meaning that we are dedicated to advancing scientific research and medicine, not only by offering solutions to our customers, but also by applying them in our own clinical trials and our own research projects. Solutions are broadly applied from research to clinical applications. We offer high quality workflows from sample preparation to cell manufacturing. Today, we will be focusing on our special biology solutions. We are also part of both research and clinical workflows and provide a deeper understanding of biology at the cellular and molecular levels. Milton's imaging and special biology solutions include two incredible platforms. The first one is the ultramicroscope blaze. This is a light sheet microscope that enables three-dimensional imaging of whole organs up to whole organisms with cellular resolution. Just to give you some additional context here, you can see a very nice example where we clear and stain a whole adult a mouse with several markers and image it in 3D. You can see it on the left side. Today, we will although be focusing on our special biology platform, the Maxima, but feel free to request more information after the webinar if you are also interested in the 3D imaging workflow. Coming back to the Maxima, our special biology platform enables researchers to image and analyze hundreds of markers in one section with subcellular resolution. On the right, you can see different examples of different tissue sections sustained with this technology. In a bit, Emily, Emily will drive you through the technical details and will explain you as well our new workflow for same section multionics. As we all know, the field of special biology is thriving right now, and we know that with the new emerging technologies, there are quite some challenges still to overcome. We went to the field and asked, where are the main challenges of spatial biology? So here we have some of them from complex instrumentations to software solutions that are not integrated or are very difficult to use. 
What I can tell you is that the Maxima platform is already addressing a lot of these issues that researchers in the community are seeing today. If we start with the instrument, the Maxima platform is fully automated from sample handling to data acquisition. We have developed different sample careers, allowing maximum flexibility so that you can analyze any sample. We also develop our own antibodies and have the largest portfolio of pre-tested antibodies for special biology. This saves much time in establishing antibody panels. However, you need to know that the Maxima is an open platform, so you could use any other pre-conjugated antibody. With our newly developed multiomics workflow, soon you will also be able to design your own RNA panels to combine them with the antibody panels. Our MaxIQ View analysis software is the only software purely developed for special biology analysis. It is extremely powerful and easy to use and provides everything you need to analyze your data. Importantly to mention today is that our analysis software has integrated multiomic analysis capabilities already built in. And finally, we provide lifelong support on all our platforms and we do this with excellent scientific and technical support globally. As you see, we cover all steps of the workflow and have everything you need to succeed with your special biology project. And this was all from my side. And now I would like to hand it over to Emily. Thank you, Ariad. So our Maxima platform is based off of our mixed technology. This stands for Maxima Imaging Cyclic Staining. It's an iterative process where we cyclically stain image and erase up to three markers per cycle. In principle, this means you can have unlimited repetitions to achieve whatever perplexing your experiment requires. We have two erase mechanisms in this process. One is a fluorochrome release and the other is fluorochrome bleaching. And this is how we achieve that amazing high content proteomic information on the Maxima platform. For our same section spatial multiomics workflow, uh, we do the same approach using the same mixed technology. This is compatible with virtually any tissue section as long as it is, it is FFPE. So in this workflow, we take an FFPE tissue section and then we detect RNA followed by protein on the same section. And after that, uh, all of the data is transported to our MaxIQ View analysis software where you can perform integrated multiomic analyses. Specifically, if we focus on our new RNA Sky technology, this is how the workflow looks. So we take an FFPE tissue section on our high resolution slide. As the name suggests, the high res slides can be used to generate high resolution images on the Maxima for protein, RNA, and multiomic data sets. We take the tissue section and we combine it with an RNA sky panel consisting of target probes, and we then perform sample preparation. This sample preparation includes hybridization, ligation, and amplification, where panel specific gene-specific oligonucleotide probes bind to the RNAs of interest and are selectively amplified. RNA detection takes place in the Maxima system and is based again on the mixed technology with each gene being detected by a single detection event during cyclic rounds of probe hybridization, image acquisition, and signal er erasure. I want to point out that this is a non-decoding based detection of four targets per cycle. So it's a one-to-one -one readout of gene of interest and detection. So what do these data look like? Here you can see we detect both RNA and protein markers in one tissue section. We first detect the RNA. Here's an example of three gene targets. We have FCAM, NS4A1, and CD3. Then you can layer on the protein data acquired on the same section. In this example, I'm showing four protein markers. And at the end, what you get is a combination of both protein and RNA in the same section and a multi-omics data set. What you can see in this example image is that the RNA targets have high spatial correlation with the selected protein markers. So what are the benefits to RNA Sky? Well, there are many, but just to highlight a few of the important ones, you can do cross-validation of upstream screening methods. You can detect secreted factors like chemokines and cytokines. You can do protein RNA co-expression analyses, signaling pathway analyses. And importantly, if you don't have a an antibody for your marker of interest or they're poorly performing, you can replace it with an RNA Sky uh, probe. As I mentioned, 
off the instrument, all of our data are ready for integrated multi-omic uh, analyses in our Max IQ View software. Software is a vital component of the Maxima platform because it's designed to streamline the entire spatial biology experiment workflow. As analysis is the final step in spatial biology experiments, it often presents a very significant challenge to researchers to obtain meaningful and publishable data. So the Max IQ View software is not only powerful, but it's also incredibly user friendly, including features such as the image viewer, segmentation, gating, and built in spatial analyses. Uh, algorithms to make comprehensive data analysis incredibly easy for all users. I now want to turn to our uh, first curated 24plex RNA Sky panel. This is our IO Explorer panel. It's an investigative panel comprising of well-characterized immune oncology markers that are broadly applicable across cancer systems. We did extensive benchmarking of this panel um, to demonstrate that RNA-Sky is reproducible, highly sensitive and specific, and we do all of this with subcellular resolution. So first, I'm going to show you intra-sample reproducibility. This is within the same tissue block from serial section to serial section. And what you can see is from uh, each serial section, we have very high concordance between replicates. However, that is not sufficient for any uh, scientific project. Typically, you need more than one tissue sample. And so now I want to show inter-sample reproducibility. So this is from two independent tissue blocks. And what you can see, again, is that incredibly high concordance between blocks with our assay. Spatial technologies are themselves a natural evolution from traditional NGS. So we benchmarked RNA-Sky with both bulk RNA-Seq and single cell RNA-Seq and tissues and cell lines. And what we saw again was very high concordance across the independent technologies. To continue our benchmarking, we assessed performance across tissue types and saw that we had high density per cell, regardless of tissue type. We also investigated the specificity of RNA-Sky by calculating the false discovery rate. This is a commonly used measure in genomics to assess false positives in a system. And as you can see across tissues, we have very low FDRs that are on par or superior to other currently commercially available technologies. To address sensitivity, we calculated the ratio of gene counts called in RNA-Sky to those called with single cell sequencing and found that our technology is more sensitive. Finally, to add a little bit of beautiful images to this, we achieve all of this with subcellular resolution. You can see the image on the left, this is a head and neck cancer sample, and on the right is a zoom up of an area of that, and each dot in that zoom represents an individual transcript with the white lines being the cell bounds. RNA alone can capture major tissue architecture. So here what I'm showing you is a tonsil section. And what you can see is just based off of the gene expression profiles alone, we were able to recapitulate the major cell populations found in the tonsil, um, including cell types such as T cells, B cells, macrophages, and epithelial cells. We also see high co-localization with protein expression of different markers. So in this example, this is a non-small cell lung cancer sample, which has high HER2 and ERBP2 expression. That's the gene that uh, underlies HER2, and they co-localize uh, in the cancerous epithelium very well. To benchmark our panel, we investigated how it performed across multiple cancer systems, and what we found is that the IO Explorer panel was able to capture well-characterized gene expression signatures across multiple cancer types. So we looked at breast cancer, non-keratinizing squamous cell carcinoma, and colorectal, and saw well-characterized gene signatures in all three of those systems. If we focus on this region of the non-keratinizing squamous cell carcinoma, what you see in the zoom is a tertiary lymphoid structure forming. B cells are captured with that cyan color surrounded by a ring of yellow T cell markers. And then what I hope you can see is a lot of purple dots everywhere. The purple dots uh, represent a gene called CDKN2A. And this high expression is in alignment with the cancer genomics data sets that showed in 97% of patients with this type of cancer, they had a high expression of CDKN2A. Importantly, our 
technology is compatible with downstream H&E. So on the left, what you see is a multi-omic image where I have multiple RNA and protein markers displayed. And on the right is a post maximum run H&E image that we then registered to our other images. And we're able to pull that into the MaxIQ view software and generate these really lovely overlays. Here you can see both RNA and protein and H&E in the same image. I now want to turn to a case study of our technology and show you an example of how powerful the combination of multiomics can be. So this study, multiomic characterization of human colon cancer associated fibroblasts with a custom 48 plex RNA sky panel and a 40 plex protein panel is work that I have done with my fellow colleague, David Agorku. Um, this is some of his work that he was doing it for his PhD. So fibroblasts have well-characterized roles in colon. They are known for uh, wound healing and under normal physiological conditions, they have multiple roles in colon. So they are involved in homeostasis and the regulation of you know, normal colon function. However, the role of fibroblasts and cancer is a hot topic in recent years. They've been demonstrated to have multiple roles in cancer progression, anything from tumor growth, invasion and metastasis, the immune modulation, and then therapy resistance. So while this role of fibroblasts and cancers has been well characterized, it's been characterized in cancer systems such as pancreatic uh, cancer, but it has not been described in colorectal cancer. So uh, we wanted to first uh, understand the fibroblast heterogeneity found in human colorectal cancer and normal colon. We wanted to ask, is there cancer-associated fibroblast heterogeneity occurring in colorectal cancer? And can we spatially resolve those cancer-associated fibroblast or CAF populations? We did this in a multitude of ways. We did proteomic analyses, single cell sequencing for different population cluster identification, in vitro studies for functional analyses, and then we did multiomic mapping of the CAFs as well as the immune cells in C2. Here is an example of our different workflows. I wanted to highlight that we used multiple Miltenny products to achieve the different aims of the study. So we did ultra high content imaging on the Maxima. We also used some of our tissue dissociation uh, products and sample preparation products to perform single cell sequencing that was enriched for fibroblasts. And then we used some of our flow cytometry offerings for those functional uh, in vitro assays um, as well. The single cell sequencing revealed uh, fibroblast heterogeneity. So we sequenced approximately 23,000 fibroblasts and 11 distinct clusters were identified in most of the clusters were found in all samples. In particular, there was three clusters, clusters three, five, and seven that were primarily found in tumor samples. Analysis of the genes uh, that were pulled out in the different clusters showed known clusters. So this was a good, you know, um, sanity check that we identified well-described populations of fibroblasts. So we identified colon crypt fibroblasts, crypt topped uh, fibroblasts, MyCAFs, ICAFs, and AP calf-like fibroblasts as well. Interestingly, that one of those three clusters that was enriched in tumor, cluster five, uh, represents a potentially novel type of cancer-associated fibroblasts. So when we did differential gene expression analysis, we saw that the genes in this cluster were associated with immune interaction and various functions involved in immunity. So first, we looked at the heterogeneity um, at the proteomic level. So we looked at uh, the difference between tumor regions of a sample and normal adjacent regions of a sample. And what you can see here is that there's differential expression of characteristic marker genes at the protein level between areas that are tumor or the adjacent normal sections, excuse me, normal areas. When we look at uh, hallmark markers at the protein level of the different identified clusters based off of the single cell sequencing, we again saw um, immense heterogeneity at the proteomic level, and we were able to identify those clusters that were pulled out in the single cell sequencing. To figure out what that novel cluster could possibly be doing, we continued to assess the interaction with T cells in vitro. So here, I'm not gonna go into too many details of it, but what you can see is that we did cold culture, and then we harvested at day three and assessed what was occurring after the co-culture. And what you can see here is that CAFs suppressed activated T cells in vitro. 
And conversely, there was an increase in cluster 5 calf gene expression when these two cell types were co-cultured together. So based off of this, the newly identified calf population was named T-cell inhibitory calves. And if you want to learn more mechanistic details, our publication just recently came out two weeks ago. Um, I encourage everyone to take a look. It's a wonderful publication. Um, so this led us to want to expand the study. It was difficult to resolve the tin calf population with proteomics alone in FFPE tissue samples due to a lack of marker availability. So what we did is we combined a custom 40 plex RNA sky panel with a 40plex proteomic panel to assess both the calves as well as immune cell dynamics in C2. As a start, we selected four fibroblast populations described in the single cell sequencing, and we defined each of these populations by four hallmark genes. So we have two normal populations of fibroblasts and then two cancer-associated fibroblasts, including those tin calves and eye calves. We were able to spatially resolve these four fibroblast populations. So here on the left is just an example of some of the protein markers that were included in our panel. And on the right are the fibroblast subpopulations that we identified on the transcriptional level. So here, each of these dots represents an individual transcript in this region of interest. And importantly, what we see is this novel tin calf population in yellow is very sparse relative to some of the other populations and uh, very localized to specific regions of the tissue. We were able to assign the transcripts to individual cells and then perform cell population analysis of the different calf populations. And what you can see here are density maps of the expression of individual cells across the sample. And so what you can see here is each of these four subpopulations of fibroblasts has very specific expression patterns and distribution throughout the sample. And in particular, the eye calves and the tin calves are a little bit more sparse relative to the AP calves and the colon crypt calves, and they seem to be localized closer to the tumor. To further elucidate this, we did distance mapping. So here we defined intratumoral, peritumoral, and distant regions of our sample, and we identified the number of cells from each population present in those regions. And what you can see here is that there was an enrichment for tin calves and eye calves in the intratumoral and peritumoral regions, um, whereas the AP calves and the colon crypt calves had a much more ubiquitous expression pattern throughout the sample. We also performed multiomic profiling of the immune cells. So here I'm showing um, different cell types that we identified based off of our RNA and protein panels. And these different populations are identified by the combination of their protein and RNA expression. So it's a true multiomic assessment of which populations are present in the immune cell populations. We did that same type of density assessment for different activation states of immune cells. So here I'm showing you cytotoxic lymphocytes as well as interferon-induced lymphocytes. And you can see that the different types of immune cells have different spatial distributions, um, including at the uh, tertiary lymphoid structure and at the tumor edge. So this is really exciting ongoing work, and the stage that we're at is now assessing the interaction between those calves and these immune cells um, and how they relate to one another in C2. So just to summarize, uh, the Maxima platform is the future of spatial multiomics, and RNA-Sky enables same-section spatial multiomics on the Maxima platform. The tumor microenvironment is complex and requires this level of multiomic assessment to have a full understanding of the dynamics occurring in different cancer systems. Calf heterogeneity is also present in colorectal cancer, as we demonstrated in this study. Um, and now we're really excited to continue to tease apart the dynamics and the interplay between these calves and the immune cells present. Excitingly, RNA Sky will be available from Q3 onwards on current and future instruments instruments. This includes our easy sample preparation kits and support reagents. We will have ready-to-use RNA panels. This is in our IO Explorer curated panel and then custom panels with any target of interest between 12 and 24 plex. And in line with our mission at Miltony, we are an end-to-end -end workflow provider. So this entire workflow is integrated with our multiomic um, data analysis with our MaxIQ View software to make you know, multiomic assessments truly user-friendly and easy to use. 
Thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. And I will take any questions.